Now is my extreme pleasure to introduce our three panelists. And we're a little bit ahead of schedule today, so that's always a bonus. Um, Audrey Ansel from Chatham Kent, Crystal Ellis from Wellington County, and Nancy Heather from Simcoe County. And they'll be speaking on workplace and housing challenges. Up first is Audrey Ansel to talk about Live in CK. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Kate. How are you today? Great, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Year. My, my pleasure to be here today. Um, so just listening to previous speakers, listening to what Aileen shared this morning, and I think the key thing that we've learned in Chatham Kent is that we can't do what we want to do, we can't achieve what we want to as a community without employer engagement. Um, so ultimately they have to believe in and trust in how we can work together and help them grow their business. So back in 2018, when Chatham Kent was actually developing our community's talent attraction and retention framework, we recognize that employer involvement and engagement um, in both developing the strategy, but also in, in executing it was key. So you can find information on the talent attraction retention framework on our website, which is livingck.ca. And you can navigate through to the working in CK um, tab there. And it has information on the strategy. Um, but that was back in 2017, 18, when we were developing that strategy. Fast forward to 2021, and so many ways in which employers are engaged in the work that we're doing. And I'm delighted to hear Aileen mention some of those pieces that are important and it really is best practices for that. Um, so Chatham Kent Employer is ultimately very engaged in supporting the work of the community attraction and promotion area. And for context, community attraction promotion um, is municipal. It includes our entire resident and talent attraction retention work. It also includes immigration and the Chatham Kent Local Immigration Partnership. Um, it also includes the work that we do around youth retention and young people in our community. Workforce Planning Board is in that pod as well, and also tourism. So basically everything you can think of that's connected to that community economic development story and how we promote Chatham Kent. So in Today in 2021, and kind of in this new world that we're in, we're certainly seeing employers are embracing welcoming communities, and Aileen mentioned that. Inclusion is a big piece that we're coming seeing coming up, and employers are asking us for ways that we can support them in, in, in welcoming you know, different workforces. They're definitely looking to new sources of workers, um, particularly around immigration, um, women's integration is the workhorse um, and other groups as well. Um, they're coming on board and actually have been on board for a number of years with that broader community promotion piece. So they're using some of the content that we're creating through the Living CK websites about videos, imagery, stories, booklets, resources, community orientations, all those pieces, they are actually using those and embracing them. And employers are also um, speaking this and we're helping them with that showcasing the career pathways and in particular I guess um, in terms of one of the groups that have been very much on board with this is in Chatham Kent we have a community leaders cabinet which is consists of 25 leaders from organizations across the community so from private sector to not-for-profit and the public sector so they're leaders that are basically collaborating across sectors at a strategic level, focused on big strategic items in the community that can have impact. Um, as a leader's cabinet, the cabinet identified in 2019 that talent attraction and retention was the single biggest issue facing the community in terms of, of growth and growing the workforce. Um, and as a, um, a cabinet, they're focused on three action teams. So they've divided their work up into a focus on employment, um, job preparation, which is that kind of grade seven to 12 careers knowledge, and then on the retention and belonging. So that whole welcoming community story. So ultimately across those 25 um, organizations, there's collaboration happening at the table, working together, sharing, acting, sharing information, and then executing a number of pieces of the work. Um, and I think then, Kate, as well, it's probably worth mentioning that we have taken a sector-based approach to solving some of our um, talent attraction and workforce shortages. In particular, we have a sector-based group focused on family physician recruitment. We have one on registered early childhood education. We have one on legal. We have one on uh, PSW, so personal support workers. And in particular, our employment and social services team have been very active there um, developing a grow your own initiative and program. And I think then maybe the last little piece I just kind of add to the story there is that Chatham Kent, 
we've recognized for a long time that immigration is the key to, to turning around the population piece and, and workforce. Um, so we've had a, lim a local immigration partnership now for 11 years. We've been involved in a number of pilot projects at a federal and a provincial level. And most recently, we have been one of three pilot communities for the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program in the regional pilot. Um, John Kent was recognized actually as a welcoming community by the federal government back in 2016. And employers supported that work and supported the efforts to resettle newcomers in our community. So through the OINP, so the regional pilot that is coming to an end in December, we have had over 60 successful nominations for permanent residents. So that means that there are 60 people in our community who are currently in full-time permanent employment, supporting employers. It's across a huge range of sectors. Um, so obviously, ultimately, you know, a lot of employers have benefited from that initiative, as not least of all people being actually able to stay in the community. And I think a piece that has come from the OANP is that employers who had never previously used or necessarily been active in considering immigration streams started to use that pilot, um, recognizing that through COVID, sometimes it was difficult to find employees, um, but matching up with some international students in our community, um, it really worked to everyone's benefit. And we're now moving into a point where we have employers who've been through the process um, doing some peer-to-peer -peer mentoring with other employers in the community. So while the pilot itself may end in December, um, we are hopeful that the recognition of immigration as a continued, you know, um, suite or part of the suite of um, adding to your workforce will continue uh, as we move forward. So I think that's probably it. Kate is kind of that high level piece there. Amazing. Thanks, Audrey. So we're going to go in quick succession over to Crystal Ellis from Wellington County to talk about Wellington County's attainable housing strategy. And then we'll go on to Nancy from Simcoe and we'll open it up for a great discussion and questions after that. So over to you, Crystal. Great. Thanks, Kate. Um, and I think um, so my section is a little bit more focused on the attainable housing side of things. Um, and I'll start with some context about Wellington County to help um, frame our approach to this as well. Um, so we're made up of seven member municipalities with a current population of around 100,000 people. Um, and this is expected to grow to 160 by 2051. So uh, we do have to figure out how to, how to sort that out. Um, some of the areas are in close proximity to the 401 corridor, while others are more rural in nature. So we do have a very diverse mix. Um, our key sectors of employment, they're manufacturing, construction, and retail trade, followed by healthcare and agriculture. So when we look at our average 2020 household income um, in the municipalities, it ranges from 85,000 in the north to 191,000 in the south. Um, and this is also reflected in the variation of housing prices across the county. Um, I did a quick look this morning on Realtor just to see what things look like as, as a real-time example. Uh, and I was really surprised to find a house listed for 380,000 in Mount Forest. I didn't click on the pictures to see what the state of that was, was at, but 380,000 in Mount Forest to the, to the north of Wellington County. Um, and then also on the flip side, there was a $4.8 million home in Rockwood um, that was listed. And really the in-between, um, kind of sitting at that $1 million mark. So um, it's, it's hard to uh, see anything really um, lower than that 500, um, but it's not surprising to see over a million dollars. So that can be very challenging as you're trying to attract a workforce to um, suit all the different types of jobs available within the county. Uh, and so to that point as well, uh, re rental vacancy rates are extremely low across the county. So that is driving up the rental rates. And we are seeing examples of, of the small communities that you would think there would be some options. Um, the price is higher than a lot of the cities um, for those rental options because there just isn't the available stock. So that sort of frames where we're at. Um, to address the housing issue, uh, in 2019, we undertook an attainable housing strategy project with Weston Consulting. Um, and Aileen had mentioned how um, 
a year ago, this housing issue may have been very different, but we were recognizing that it, it's really just, um, it's grown in its urgency um, with our current state. We, we were recognizing this pre-pandemic that, that we knew that there was going to be a challenge there. So we had this need for the strategy stemming from staff recruitment and retention issues that our key business sectors were facing. They were unable to attract new employees because they couldn't afford to live and work here. So it was a, a real mismatch. Uh, and it was apparent that the attainable housing shortage diminished the ability of the county to retrain, uh, retain and attract key businesses that support. This was uh, challenging our talent attraction. Uh, it was challenging a lot of, a lot of the, um, the activities that we had. So it was really at the root of that problem. So our approach to attainable housing, um, we, we recognize sort of three different housing areas. There's the affordable or assisted housing, and that's supported in an ongoing manner. So more on a social services level, the attainable housing, which is, is where we're providing some public intervention at the time of purchase or construction, but not beyond that. And then there's the available or market housing. So just what's available on the market with no interventions. So Wellington County is being proactive in respect to the attainable housing section. So where can we create some interventions um, to help with that initial um, step into the market for, for our workforce? At the beginning of the year, um, we brought together an attainable housing task force. So this was one of the actions that resulted in that um, 2019 strategy. So we had just uh, approved that strategy um, in the winter of 2019, um, and we were about to strike that committee and the pandemic hit. Um, I think that was just the week of, uh, of everything shutting down was our first meeting. So uh, that stalled it and we, we had other priorities that we needed to address at that time, but uh, we were able to revive that at the beginning of this year. And the task force is made up of elected officials and senior staff from the county department. So this included planning, economic development, treasury, and our social service housing division. So we made sure that we had all of the key people around the table that had an interest or had an ability to um, interact with this. Uh, and we, uh, we used the, the attainable housing strategy as our starting point. So there were recommendations brought forward there. And that's where um, we sort of kicked it off for this year. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave you with the four main areas that we're looking at um, in terms of that attainable housing actions with the task force. Uh, so number one uh, is changing public mindset through a dedicated public relations campaign. Um, we talked about, or Aileen talked about the NIMBYism. So we're approaching this with a yes in my backyard approach. Um, and how do we, how do we express to the people in our community uh, and to our businesses that uh, this is really important? Um, who are the people that are trying to live in our community? Um, what does that look like? And how can we help support that so that our community um, can be more resilient and, and uh, help our businesses as well? Uh, the second is policy review and changes. So uh, adding additional residential units, ARUs, into that into that policy so that's an ability um, within our communities that allows to encourage more diverse a more diverse housing mix so we're looking at those policies to be able to to help encourage that uh, the third is financial incentives so through uh, avenues such as a community improvement program uh, we've just opened up our cip for review and we'll be incorporating attainable housing incentives incentives in there and the fourth is uh, developing an attainable housing pilot uh, to create housing stock suitable for our workforce. So we're looking at um, ways that we can um, help support that um, and help encourage that within our community so that we're actually um, getting units built within Wellington County. So I'll, I'll leave our attainable there and, uh, and pass it back to you, Kate. Great. Thanks so much, Crystal. It's those numbers, even just on Realtor this morning, they're shocking. And the population for Wellington is incredible. Okay, up next, we're over to Nancy Heather from Simcoe County to talk about work in Simcoe. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Kate. Thanks so much. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of the County of Simcoe to talk about our workforce attraction and retention initiatives 
that our office is undertaking um, to support regional employers and stakeholders. Um, we do have a presentation that will, Dylan's gonna be bringing up for me. Um, just to provide a bit of context though, uh, just so you know, County of Simcoe is located uh, just north of the greater Toronto area. We have 16 member municipalities and a population of approximately 310,000 people. Um, and we're projected for significant growth as well, uh, approximately 200,000 uh, people and 90,000 jobs by, uh, by 2051. So uh, we, 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 we have a strategic plan and what I'm gonna talk to you today is about, um, about that and some of the key initiatives that we have uh, implemented. I just want to make sure, Dylan, we have the, the slides up. Terrific. Okay. So next slide, please. I want to provide some background and say that the county has a five-year economic development strategy, which provides a path forward for the county of Simcoe to follow to 2025. The strategy includes uh, five overarching goals with actionable objectives and tactics for each one. Uh, in our public engagement with the business community to develop our strategy, we heard a lot about the challenges around attracting and retaining talent, as well as opportunities uh, to support employers. And one of the goals our uh, in our strategy, as shown on the screen, is through excellent quality of life, education and careers, Simcoe County attracts and retains talent to support the needs of its thriving business community. Next slide, please. So key objectives within this talent attraction retention goal focus on actively working to strengthen linkages between educational providers, industry, and students, building awareness of the region as a great place to live and build a career to people who are skilled in sectors that are experiencing key shortages, supporting employers to better attract and retain the talent they need to stay in business and grow, and striving to create a welcoming community that can attract and retain newcomer talent. Uh, the County Economic Development Office in collaboration with area partners are implementing many tactics within the objectives noted, and I'm just gonna share a few examples with you today. Next slide, please. Uh, to begin, uh, work in SimcoeCounty.ca is a one-stop shop website that was launched by the county in June of 2020. Um, the user-friendly site includes several unique features, uh, such as career exploration tools, made in Simcoe County success stories, and resources for job seekers and employers. Next slide, please. Work in Simcoe County uses an automated fetching tool to ag uh, aggregate for thousands of jobs listings from popular career sites. And this alleviates local employers from having to enter their job postings on multiple sites, as well as job seekers having to search a variety of platforms for work opportunities within the county. In the month of October, uh, 2021, there were close to 9,600 jobs posted on this site. This site also has the ability to map job opportunities across the region and provides important information on accessing resources such as Employment Ontario resources and settlement services. Next slide, please. Under the Career Exploration tab, uh, job seekers and employers have access, uh, can access the Simcoe County uh, Ferry and Aurelia Edge Factor Hub which provides interactive activities for various STEAM careers, including focus on the skilled trades. The local school boards are a partner in this project uh, with participation from 25 high schools and eligible businesses can create a free profile and it links directly to local employment opportunities via work in Simcoe County. Next slide, please. The portal also aids recruitment efforts by highlighting which jobs are in current demand. Uh, the monthly job demand reports include information on the number of postings, top hiring employers, and top hiring occupations. The site also includes resources for job seekers and employers, such as how to access apprenticeships and cooperative learning opportunities. Next slide, please. Workforce attraction marketing is promoted through the Work in Simcoe County job site as it links uh, directly to these thousands of local careers. Our office has launched uh, video campaigns targeting selected demographics and areas in both the local market 
the GTA market, as well as out of province in Alberta. Workforce attraction marketing has featured local success stories and perspectives of local staff working in key sectors. Uh, this multiple platform campaign has been featured on billboards, social media through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and online media news outlets. And our communications team at the county has assisted with strategic targeting using filters such as post-secondary programs. And on the next slide, I wanted to share a short video featuring perspectives from young local champions working in the manufacturing, tourism, and professional scientific and technical services sectors in Simcoe County. I think what most people probably do not associate this area with is the amount of entrepreneurial opportunities that are here. As much as I had grown up here my whole life, I was really surprised I was able to get an engineering job so fast and so early in my career. We're a young company. Um, it's got a small feel, like a family business type feel, but we do a lot of innovative technology. So there's always uh, opportunity for growth, expansion, um, and not only just in size, but to different markets. And so it is quite easy to be able to break into the market, especially out, being outside of Toronto area. You're really able to find uh, employment in opportunities that you might not have thought were accessible for people our age. Yeah, on top of the industry, people I think are, are drawn to the Simcoe County area because of the amenities that they offer. They offer a lot of uh, local cuisine, which is really fantastic, as well as some of the arts and music festivals. And of course, you can't avoid beautiful Georgian Bay and all of the hiking trails involved with it. You can hit Wasega Beach, which is really convenient for people. And I think people are looking for that natural and calming atmosphere, as well as to achieve progression in their careers too. So you can find a challenging field that you want to work in, that you're passionate about working in, but also being able to escape and go to the peace and quiet, whether you enjoy the outdoors, um, if you enjoy living on the water, uh, this is the best place that you can possibly be. And usually people come from like the GTA area or other parts of, the, uh, of, of Ontario to come and visit these places, but I get to live here and it's, just, it's absolutely amazing that I get to just like use the space. Growing up, I never expected to be able to work in this area. I always kind of came to the terms where I'd have to maybe move south to the city, but um, in 2014, I saw the opportunity, and um, at the time, I was living down in the States, and it was uh, pretty amazing to be able to come home and uh, work in an automotive uh, factory like this. I guess it just kind of depends on what you're looking for, but I feel like everything that you're looking for is here, and you really need to take the advantage of being able to live in a smaller community so you have that support system there for you and you'll be able to find that challenging kind of job that you want. Terrific. So that video has been used in a campaign that we just actually launched last week. Um, and next slide, please. Um, also wanted to mention an effort to bring uh, students, job seekers, and employers together. The county and area partners have executed two virtual job fairs in 2021 with 167 employers and over 800 job seekers using an in interactive platform where job seekers and employers can connect through one-on-one -on -one text ch chats, audio, and video. Um, had over 2,000 conversations between job seekers and employers uh, occurring during these live events. And these events also included live, live webinars on important topics such as accessing Employment Ontario programs and immigrant-specific employment programs. Next slide, please. Uh, the County of Simcoe has also focused on fostering student and industry connections. The Simcoe Muskoka Skilled Trades Expo is a community partnership that sees over 3,000 students try a trade and speak with industry mentors. In 2021, partners pivoted to offer a virtual scavenger hunt, but we look forward to delivering this event in the near future. Um, the expo has been recognized for its vast reach and has made a lasting impression on grades seven and eight students. Next slide, please. Uh, the county and area partners have also been delivering virtual learning events for employers 
focused on topics such as uh, leading workforce retention practices, as well as culture awareness training, including an event called Dimensions of Diversity, Keys to Building a Thriving Workforce, which featured an expert speaker discussing the foundations of intercultural awareness in the workplace and a panel of local employers sharing best practices and experiences from, uh, from their companies. Next slide, please. And the last initiative I wanted to touch on uh, is the county's Automation Accelerator Program pilot launched with support from the Rural Economic Development Program through OMAFRA and uh, aligned with other uh, areas of our economic development strategy. Um, this program does have impl impl implications uh, with respect to our workforce strategy. Uh, according to uh, BDC's 2021 labor shortage study, companies that had automated certain areas of their businesses are two times more likely to find hiring easy and one time, uh, 1.9 times more likely to see sales growth above the industry average compared to companies that had not automated. This program was developed with a focus on practical tools that manufacturers could implement to drive change and leverage smart manufacturing technologies. And it was in direct response to consultations with the manufacturing sector. Um, the program did exceed our target with 25 participants from 20 businesses. Uh, so Kate, those are uh, just a few key uh, work in Simcoe County initiatives uh, that I wanted to highlight um, in terms of uh, what, what our economic development office is doing along with our key partners across the region to support workforce attraction and retention. Thanks. Fantastic, thanks so much, Nancy. It really encompasses the key to partnership, uh, definitely with all those projects. So now we will open it up to uh, questions in the chat function. So if you have any questions for Audrey, Crystal or Nancy, pop them in that chat function. I've got a couple to get us started. Um, Crystal. Are employers in Wellington County expressing that housing is a barrier to attracting talent? Yes, yeah, and we are seeing that across the board. Um, uh, housing, like I, I'd mentioned kind of previously, housing is an issue when it relates to a lot of different factors. If we're looking at talent attraction, you have to make sure that there's some place for people to live. Um, if a business is trying to seek 50 new employees, um, either transportation or housing were coming up as the two main reasons why it was difficult to get that workforce um, in the right market. Um, and then we also have that challenge of, of um, uh, neighboring communities. Um, they don't want us to be um, taking workforce from them as well, either. So um, trying to find the right balance. And so um, by being able to bring people in from um, even different areas um, that just aren't your neighbors um, is, is really key in that factor. So making sure that there's not just, not just a housing option, but a suitable housing option. Um, we asked, we had a, a welcoming and inclusion survey that we, we did recently. And one of the questions we asked was, is the housing option suitable for your needs? So um, it's not just a matter of making sure that there's a lot of one bedroom apartments. It's tying into um, a, a diverse um, mix of housing, making sure it's not just single family dwellings, um, ensuring that um, people can find the right fit for them and for their budget. Fantastic, thanks, Crystal. A uh, question for Nancy, how are employers responding to the work in pro uh, Simcoe project? That's a great question and important question, Kate. Um, Feedback from employers about work in Simcoe County has been really positive. Employers are looking for assistance with talent attraction and, and sharing and amplifying their story across the region and outside the region. Um, firstly, we've received feedback that the job aggregator on the work in Simcoe County platform is easy for employers because it alleviates them having to post their jobs directly on the site. Uh, secondly, uh, during the marketing campaigns, again, which all uh, lead back to the work in Simcoe County job opportunities, uh, we've provided companies with a media kit and encouraged them to amplify the message. So employers have become local champions for the campaign, uh, sharing on their websites, their company intranets, social media, 
and recruitment events. Um, the campaign and messaging are impactful and, and authentic when it comes from local industry and people living and working in our communities. Um, also the creative process with industry has always been collaborative. So we've been seeking input and ideas um, and therefore executing the project as, as partners from the onset. Um, if we want industry to be ambassadors for the program, it's crucial that they're proud of the product. And this creates an impactful message and builds relationships with, with our local companies. We also share the results of the campaigns with our industry partners, in addition to stakeholders, and we ask for feedback. And we've worked with our participating companies to organize thank you celebrations, inviting employers to attend, uh, and their employees to attend and learn about the campaign. And this both increases awareness of the initiative and encourages um, you know, staff from these companies to become advocates for the campaign. And finally, um, although not the primary, primary goal, another outcome is promoting local collaboration up among area companies. Um, so making those B2B connections, because as we share success stories, it's opened the doors to opportunities to work with suppliers and partners in the region. Fantastic. So employers are really integral to the success of the projects and they've been a part of it since day one. Most definitely. Fantastic, great. Uh, Audrey, for you, what are some ways employers are engaged in Live in CK? Right. Thank you, Kate. Um, so many ways. I mean, as Nancy has shared there, they are using the materials that we are creating. So the promotional pieces, um, they're certainly connecting with us when they're um, potentially hosting um, potential new employees. So before they come to the community, employers obviously increasingly recognize that it's not just about a job in a community. It's also about the quality of life, the lifestyle, the welcoming piece there. So they're connecting with us ahead of time. Um, to ensure that we can provide some of those supports, some of the community information that they can then share with their potential employees. And certainly once the employees actually arrive here, um, that's an ongoing piece. And we've always said to our employers and really across the community is that um, for our area community attraction promotion and the whole Living CK um, ethos is it's not a once and done. So you may arrive in the community to a great job, you may be perfectly happy. And then, you know, 18 months down the line, perhaps at that point, it's when you realize that, you know, you don't know where local pickup hockey may be, or, you know, you're starting to find your feet. And it's at that point that we are there still with employers as partners in this work, very much focused on the retention piece. And that's connected to families as well. And so we are working to develop, um, um, that kind of exit survey piece because we also want to understand why it is that employees are leaving our community. Um, we hear lots of anecdotal pieces and, and maybe that's maybe all it'll ever be, but we certainly want to understand some of those exit survey pieces as to why people are leaving. Um, is it um, because of career pathways or is it perhaps that just people, you know, top out in their career and they want to move on to somewhere else where other opportunities are? So, um, but ultimately, I think, as I said at the very beginning, is that we can't do this work without employers. Um, we hope that we are ultimately a help um, to, to their work and what they're doing. Thanks, Kate, for the question. Fantastic. Great. And I'll have one last question for all of you. Um, what would you say it is the biggest um, component of partnership or who, who do you need to partner with to make sure your projects and your programs are successful. And I'll, I'll go back to Crystal for this one and then Nancy, then Andre. Sure, so um, when we're looking at the policy side of things and, and I guess in my backyard campaign, that is really um, the county, our member municipalities, our support agencies um, to really root that message I think at the start, and then as we as we move on, um, pushing that out into the community. So um, the yes in my backyard um, to to promote um, make Wellington County home and to showcase that um, we're really we're trying to engage. We're actually engaging right now with um, people who are having challenges finding that that housing. We're trying to identify those people, um, and we pushed a social media campaign out, um, and they're they're telling us their story. So. We're trying to make it genuine and real and, um, and really um, meaningful, humanize the, the challenge for people so that 
um, when a housing development or um, a new something that looks a little different um, isn't as much a surprise to people that it fits in the community um, and that it does become part of the community and they see the benefits to that. So I think that is that whole wholesome community approach. It's not just business, but it's also those residents too. Um, and yeah, so I think think that's that's key. And, and because we have seven member municipalities um, working side by side with those municipalities um, and then everyone else um, that flows through that is, is crucial. We, we're not able to do this on our own. Thanks, Crystal. The one word I heard there was wholesome. So that real wholesome approach to partnership, I think is a really great word to keep in the back of our minds. Over to you, Nancy. Thanks, Kate. I completely agree with Crystal. Um, it, it takes a, you know, incredible collaboration with many, many partners to have made um, the initiatives that I presented successful in our community. Um, everything from our municipal partners having 16 member municipalities. We also work closely with the cities of Barrie and separated cities of Barrie and Aurelia across our region um, on many of these initiatives. Uh, it takes our educational partners, our post-secondary partners, as well as I mentioned, our public school, school boards. Um, of course, our employers play a key role, uh, as I mentioned, in terms of our the planning, the strategic planning, in terms of the uh, participation in our initiatives and the promotion of our initiatives. And then many, many other partners, including our, our labor market partners, our workforce planning boards, and our um, employment Ontario, et cetera. So, uh, it takes broad partnership and collaboration to implement these successful initiatives. Fantastic. So making sure everybody's at the table, for sure. Uh, Audrey, over to you. Okay, I guess ultimately mirroring what um, both Crystal and Nancy have said, but with a population now of over 106,000 in Chatham-Kent, um, I would think that our residents, so anybody who lives and works here in our community, are ambassadors ultimately for our community. And that welcoming piece we've always said for Chatham Kent, the welcome doesn't happen in a one building where you go and say, hey, I'm here. And everybody goes, oh, welcome. It's awesome to have you here. It happens everywhere. It happens at the grocery store. It happens when you go to the doctor's office, to the school, like no matter where you go in the community. And that ultimately is, you know, that is born of people being proud of the community in which they live or work, um, have invested in, have raised their children in. Um, and so that community pride piece. So I think ultimately, Employer is really important in the mix, but employers also as residents in the community and caring about, you know, where they are doing business. Fantastic. So the one word all three of you said was community. So partnerships to recovery is all about community, which I love that. That's brilliant. Well, ladies, I can't thank you enough for your time today. Um, you've given us, us some great insight into the projects that you're working on and how to implement those partnerships um, in, in real life. So thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming today.